Why live a normal life when you could be living the abundant life? Welcome to the Abundant Life Program with Ashley and Carly Terrades. Hello and welcome to Abundant Life. My name is Ashley Terrades and this is my awesome wife, Carly. <laughs> and we're so glad you joined us today. Uh, you've joined us in the lounge and mm-hmm. we're so happy that you're here with us. So wherever you're watching, thank you for tuning us in. And we've got a great message for you today. We're excited, praise God. We sure are. So what's going on, Carly? What's going on? <laughs> we're going to be teaching on the work of your hand. Amen, the work of your hand. So this is a real practical lesson. I'm excited about this. And uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to set this up really to show you about how work is God's design. Sometimes work can be like a four-letter word in the mm-hmm. Christian circles. When I tell people, I tell people, you know what, work? They're like, what, you want us to work? I was like, I yes. I thought we were in ministry. I know, I thought it was ministry. <laughs> I thought it was under grace. Do we really have to, surely we could just wait there and God will just rain money on us. Yeah. I'm like, no, we're you know under what? grace. We don't be under the law, right, having to work. I know, right? It's like work <laughs> is good. In fact, I taught this at a Bible school one time. I said, hey, guys, i got this new thing going on. Every time I do it, money just appears. I do this thing and it's money amazing. just appears. People get their notebooks out. Yeah. They'll get them like on the edge of it's, their seats. Tell us about deep. it. They're like, tell us about deep. it. I said, you know what it is? It's called work. Work. You work and money comes, praise God. Guaranteed. You know, work was God's idea. You know, I want to I show you this. In Genesis 2.15, it says, uh, uh, then the Lord, this is Genesis 2.15, then the Lord took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work and to keep it. God created Adam put him in the garden to work and to keep it. Some translation says to tend and to keep it. But Adam's job was to work the garden. This was before the fall. This was before everything went wrong. This was God's ideal. God actually created man to tend the garden actually, and to keep the garden. He had a job before he had a wife. That's, that's correct. That's a little rabbit trail, but that is mm. good. You know what? Adam had a job before he had a wife. And I tell single guys, you know what? Get a job. Start providing for your future family before right. you even have a family. That's a good place to be. Girls are high maintenance and they need to be provided for. Come on, just saying. And then also, <laughs> girls, don't date anyone or don't marry anyone without a job, for right. sure. If you're marrying someone and they live in their, you know, their parents' basement and they haven't got a job, forget it, honey. Sitting on the couch eating Cheetos all day. Forget mm-hmm. it. And if you're, if you're a guy and I want to date my daughter, Forget it. Get a job, <laughs> get out of debt, get some savings. <laughs> act like a man. Get some principles, act like a man, yeah, and, and then we'll maybe talk about it. So anyway. <laughs> Spoken like a true father right there. I got, I got a T-shirt, it says uh, D-A-D-D. It says yeah. Dad's Against Daughter's Dating. Funny enough, all the dads high-five him when he wears it, yeah. and all the teenage girls just scowl at him. They don't like it. I've got another one It says Rules for Dating My Daughter. Number one, don't. Yeah. That's it. That's Goodbye. <laughs> so, so I'm sorry, Hannah, if you're watching. I'm sorry, but there you go. So anyway, um, God created man to work, and it says that there in Genesis 2.15. Then you know what happened. Adam and Eve disobeyed God, and that's what we had the fall, and that's when everything changed. So they disobeyed God. They did the one thing that God told them not to do, and this is Genesis 3.17. Genesis 3.17, it says this. Cursed is the ground for your sake. Now notice, God didn't curse the ground, Mm. but the ground was cursed because of the fall. Because they've been disobedient to God, the ground was cursed. And God says here, God speaking to Adam, he says, Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat the bread. So what God's basically saying is the ground's now cursed. Before, Adam would work the ground and it'd be easy. It'd be a pleasure. It'd be easy. You know, he'd do the tilling and the gardening, whatever you're doing. I'm not a green-fingered person, so I don't know really how to tend a garden. But if you're into tending a garden, you know what? He would do the work. Now, after the fall, he was doing the work. But guess what? There was thorns and thistles. Right. So it's much more difficult than it was It was before. more difficult. He was doing the same work, mm-hmm. same effort, but he right. was getting less results. Right. And it was being painful sometimes, frustrating. You can imagine mm-hmm. those thistles, back in those days, those big old thistles, you know, they were poking him and, and, and hurting him sometimes. So he was having to deal with thorns and thistles. He was getting cut sometimes, it was painful. Mm-hmm. So basically, Adam's work became you know, un- unproductive, not as productive as it was before, sometimes painful, sometimes, you know, frustrating. His work changed and changed and, and work changed. In fact, uh, the Haggai um, uh, looks at it this way. Haggai 1.6 says, it's like earning wages. You put them in a bag with holes. Right, so he some people runs out again. He's like, never get ahead. It's like mm-hmm. earning wages you put in a bag with holes. You never quite get enough. Mm-hmm. Proverbs 23, 5, maybe some of you can relate to this. Proverbs 23, 5 says, money grows wings and flies away. 
Sometimes it's like we can never get ahead. Sometimes it doesn't matter how much we work. Yeah. It doesn't matter how much toil we put in. Money comes in, money goes out, but there's not enough. Money comes in, money comes out. The names are changed to protect the innocent. You know what? <laughs> Sometimes there's just our month is you know there's, our month is longer than our paycheck, right. and we just don't have enough. And we're mm-hmm. always trying to keep up. We're always we're just just falling short. That's a lot of people's reality. These that days. is a lot of people's reality. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people find work frustrating. They find it um, just just not fulfilling. Maybe they're doing something they just don't like doing. They don't like things like that. So basically, what happened at the fall was the work of our hands became cursed. Now, before the fall, the work of our hands was blessed. God blessed us, right. and He wanted the work was God's idea, right. and it was a blessing. But That's after the fall, Adam's hands were cursed. The work of our hands had become cursed. Mm-hmm. But the good news is, you know what? We're redeemed from the curse of the law. Galatians mm-hmm. three thirteen. We're redeemed from the curse of the law. And when Jesus came down, He redeemed us from all the curses. He redeemed us from everything that happened in the garden. He reversed it. Right. Praise God. So everything that went wrong in the garden, Jesus reversed it. Praise God. And you know what? Everything Jesus did was for a reason. He didn't just do things and there was no reason for it. So everything he did when he was on earth and everything he did leading up to the cross, up until the, the, his crucifixion and his death, his burial and his resurrection, they were all significant. Everything had a part to play. Right. So uh, this is um, Matthew 27, 29. In Matthew 27, 29, it says the guards, they made a crown of thorns. They made a crown out of thorns and they, and they weaved it together. And they set it on Jesus' head. And I don't know about you, but I've always wondered, why was that a crown of thorns? They were mocking him as a king. But you know what? They took those thorns, put it on Jesus' head, set it into his head, and he said he, he sweat blood. They, they actually, it, it, it actually pierced his skin. It pierced mm-hmm. his forehead. Remember, Genesis 3, 17 and 18, God said, you're going to, by the sweat of your brow, you're going to eat there of the food. You know what? Jesus took those thorns into his forehead mm-hmm. That sweat came down, that, that blood came down mm-hmm. the sweat. And right there, he took the same thorns that were in the ground that were a curse. He had them set on his head to redeem us from the curse mm-hmm. of work. So that curse of being unfulfilled, yep. unproductive, not being able to have enough, not getting not getting get ahead. Right. Jesus redeemed us from it. Jesus things. redeemed us from it right there with the crown Amen. of thorns on his That's head. Powerful. We were redeemed from the curse of work. And now our the work of our hand is blessed. Jesus paid the price of it. He put that crown of thorns on his head. He took that frustrating, mm-hmm. like you said, not quite enough, frustration of work, not quite getting ahead, always uh, you know working and not having mm-hmm. enough. He took that curse on his head, praise God, so that we can be blessed. And now Amen. the works of our hands are blessed, praise Amen. God. Isn't that neat? Amen. So the work of our hands is blessed. So we need to believe that and realize, you know what, from now on the works of our hands is blessed everything we do prospers amen so whatever we touch prospers amen Amen. so you can look at if you're taking notes psalm 1 3 is a great verse well psalm 1 3 is talking about uh, the blessed of uh, the work of our hands deuteronomy 28 i think psalm 1 3 says everything he does will prosper deuteronomy 28 uh, 8 says the work of our hands is blessed praise god Uh, psalm 68 19 let me read you this one this is psalm 68 verse 19 if I can get it quick enough here, I've got my uh, electronic Bible here. Psalm 68, verse 19. You know what I'm looking it up because I don't remember what it says. Don't tell you what. They won't notice. <laughs> it was on my nose. Here we go. Okay. I hope no one noticed that, but I've got it written down here. Psalm, you can't read Psalm your own 68, writing. 19. I don't know what it says. I've just got it written down. That's terrible, isn't it? This is Psalm 68, 19. One of my favorite verses. Of course. I quote it every yes. day from memory. <laughs> Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. That's a great verse. That's a great verse. The God of our salvation. So you know what? Blessed be the Lord. He daily loads you with benefits. Mm. He loads you with benefits. Loaded. You are, you are loaded. loaded with benefits. And I Deuteronomy love that. 28, 8 says, He blesses the work of your hands. And Psalm 1, uh, verse 3 says that everything we do prospers. So you know what? We have got the we've got the blessing now on the works of our hands. Doesn't matter what you do. Well, you need to start believing your work is blessed. Mm-hmm. I tell people there's two types of Christians. Those who, those who are blessed and believe it and those who are blessed and don't believe it. Mm-hmm. So you need to believe that you're blessed. And when you go into work, whatever your situation, whether you're employed, whether you're a business owner, whether you're retired and you, and you do things voluntary, whatever you do, whether you're a student, whatever your work is, you know, whatever your work is, your right. full-time occupation, whatever that is, that is blessed now. And you need to go into it thanking God that it's blessed. And when we do that, we are blessing it. Amen. With our words. Our yeah, we Amen. believe it and therefore we speak it. Amen. Too many people moan about their jobs, 
moan about their bosses and all this stuff. They speak you, about everything they don't have. They speak about everything they don't have. Mm -hmm. They moan about it. You know what? They have a bad experience right. at work. I'm telling you, I've had jobs for working for people that, are, I mean, the devil would take notes on them. I mean, we're talking about, well, I've worked for some bad bosses mm -hmm. in my time, some heathen. Yeah, I remember yeah. one boss I had, he said to me, actually, he said, I'm a great sinner. I'm a re I'm really good at sinning. He's quite proud of it. And I said, you know what? You really are. And he'd come back and tell me all the things he'd done. I'd be like, wow, you really are good at sinning. I mean, I could tell you some stories about this guy. But you know what I did? I honoured the position. Right. I honoured him as my boss. I didn't do everything perfectly. But you know what? I turned up on time. I, I, didn't, I didn't lie. I did a good job. I mm -hmm. told the truth. I honoured him. When he wasn't there, I worked the same as if he was there. Mm -hmm. I didn't slack off. I didn't right. cut corners. I didn't... Get this, this could upset some people. I didn't slack off and witness to people instead of working. You weren't a hypocrite. I was hanging a minute, actually. Mm. If, if we're witnessing to people, you know, surely we can witness to people. No, you can't just leave your work and neglect your work so you can witness to people. Right. That's no, not godly. There's no excuse for Christians to be lazy. Amen. Christians should be the hardest working, most diligent people, and people mm. should want to hire Christians. And unfortunately, that's not always the case. What happened was I worked for this place. It was a big car dealership, and I came in on the lowest level, you know, lowest level car salesman. And what happened was... I turned up on time, I, I put the work in, mm -hmm. and I didn't lie to the customers. They'd say, Ashley, just tell the customer this. And I said, I'm really sorry, I can't. I don't want to tell them that. And they said, why? I said, because I don't want to lie. And they said, I don't want to lie. And after mm -hmm. a while, they realized, hey, if he won't lie to the customers, if he won't, if he won't lie to strangers, right. he probably won't lie to us. Exactly. And I remember you going in there in that position and being the lowest salesman mm -hmm. on the totem pole. And, you know, the be if you're ever in sales, you realize that the best shifts for salesmen mm -hmm. are at the weekends. Mm -hmm. And... You, because you were the, the in England, last Saturday and Sundays in England, right. Saturday in America. You got the worst Saturdays. shift. You got the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. No yeah. one ever buys cars on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays. Or everything always happens at the weekends. Mm -hmm. But you know, I remember we we clearly um, we stood in agreement that you know yeah. you might only get three days, and they're the worst three days out of the week for regular people, but not for you, because yeah. everything you touch blessed. And rather than despising small beginnings. We blessed it. We spoke yep. a blessing over you. And yep. you ended up selling more cars. I remember one time you went in on your day off. It was a Friday. You went in to collect his wages because yep. they paid him in cash then. Yep. He went in and he ended up selling cars on his day off. Yep. people And people would wait for you. They'd ask for me by They'd name. They'd ask you. Because yep. they knew that I, would, I didn't tell the tell lies. I told the right. truth. And I, and I treated honorable. them right. So it's amazing. But we have the attitude, that, you know what? My work is blessed. So whatever it is, whether you're employed like mm. I said, whether you've got your own business, whatever it is, your work is blessed. Whatever you put your hands to is blessed now, praise Amen. God. And that's where promotion comes from. Promotion comes from the Lord. Right. And I hear too many Christians say, well, they fired me because I'm a Christian. I'm like, no, mm. they fired you because you slacked off. Yeah. You didn't turn you didn't up on time. Up. You didn't do what you, you said didn't you were going to do. You didn't work very hard. Everything else. And then when, they, when you told them you're a Christian, you're not going to lie or you're not going to do this, that, and the other, they fired you. But that's not really the real reason they fired you. It's very unlikely you're going to get fired in America for being a Christian. If you do, don't worry about it. God's got better for you, Amen. praise God. And that's persecution. You're going to get better for it. But I'm telling you, you need to start believing the work of your hands is blessed. And then put your hand to something. I tell people, you know what? It's all very well believing the works of your hands are blessed. But what if you don't put your hand to anything? You know, mm. uh, Deuteronomy 28.8 says the Lord will bless the work of our hands. Well, if we haven't got anything in our hands, how's mm -hmm. God going to bless it? You know, a hundredfold of zero is zero, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's good math there. But a hundredfold of zero is zero. If you don't give something, you know, the Lord something to work with, right. it's going to be hard for him to bless it. So I encourage you, put your hand to something. Do something. I'm thinking of a, a guy once I met. I was at a men's breakfast, mm -hmm. and a guy came to me and said, Ashley, you know, I know you're, you're good with finances. Can you help me? I said, sure, what's up? He said, I've been looking for work. I've been looking for work for nearly a year. Mm -hmm. He said, I can't find a job. Right. And I said, really? I said, well, on the way here, I saw that Subway was hiring. Subway, the sandwich place, you know, mm -hmm. they're making sandwiches. Well, he looked at me like I'd run over his dog. He stepped back. He looked me up and down and said, he went, Subway? Subway? I mean, you could see. He was like, what Subway? I remember said, this guy. I know. He said... I used to be a CFO, he said, he said, I've got two degrees. I said, look, I said, they'll let you make a sandwich with two degrees. Yeah. I said, I'll be okay. He said, he said, you can't be serious. I said, I'm dead serious. I said, look, he said, they pay $10 an hour in Subway. I said, look, how much have you earned for the last year? Right. Zero dollars an hour. I said, give the Lord something to work with. And he said, Ashley, you can't be serious. You can't really expect me uh, uh, to be come from corporate America as a, you know, an executive to go and work at Subway. I said, look, you've been looking for a job for, for a year. You haven't got you anything. You've earned nothing. You've earned nothing. If I was you, I would do something. Put your hand to yep. something. Something's and better you know than what? nothing. I said to him, you know what happened? You go to work in Subway. And it'll be a very short time before either the manager will see you, see how good you are, see how overqualified you 
car and you'll be managing the subway. You'll end up being the regional manager of subway or you'll be making a sandwich and some guy will come in and say, hey, I'm just starting a company. I need a CFO. And you'll get hired like right. that. Something good will happen when you turn up to work. But give the Lord something to work with. You've got to get in the game, right? Get in the game to have something to work with. I'm thinking of the parable of the talents, you know. The guy with the five talents, he went out, traded with his talents and made five more talents and came back to the master and said, here's ten talents. And the master said, well done, good and faithful servant. Right. And then the guy with the two talents, the same thing, doubled them. What happened with the guy with the one talent, he didn't do anything with it. He buried mm-hmm. it out of fear. He was the he lazy servant. He was lazy and he was fearful and mm-hmm. he buried it and he didn't do anything with it. And guess what happened? They took that one talent and gave it to the guy with 10 talents. Now, the guy with 10 talents didn't do anything to get that extra talent. That was supernatural increase, if you like. But he was in the game. He did put his hand to something. He was faithful in the little. He was faithful in the little. And he was given much. And he was given more. And sometimes if you just get in the game, God will give you something supernatural. I can't tell you how many times I've been in business or I've been in situations. And just because I've shown up and I've been at the right place at the right time, something will happen. And I'll get a deal, or I'll meet someone, or I'll get a lucky, lucky break. And someone say, actually, you're just so how do you how did that happen? You're just so lucky. No, it's because I was in the game. Right. I was actually giving the Lord something to you work with. You were in the with. right place at the right time. Because you were at work. There's actually a guy who works with us who actually um, gave up a corporate job, came down and uh, worked for a ministry, took a mm-hmm. ministry position, mm-hmm. and then he 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 felt the Lord call him to work a night shift at 7-Eleven. So he went to 7-Eleven, worked a night shift, where it was a very short period of time, I think it was two and a half years. Mm-hmm. He went from working the night shift in 7-Eleven to being the regional manager of 50 7-Elevens and earning the same salary as he did when he was in corporate America. Wow. So it just shows you, when you give the Lord he something to work with... He didn't have to, to do night shifts then. <laughs> he didn't have to do night shifts there, no. When you give the Lord something to work with, praise God, he wants to bless you. And I'm telling you, this, this, he wants to give you something uh, supernatural. He wants to provide for you. He, he can provide for you better than you can provide for you, but you have to give him something right. to work with. And it's interesting, you know, every time there's a supernatural provision from the Lord in the Bible, every time, there's a natural obedience that happens first. Amen. It's like we have to give something natural for God to work with first. So the supernatural happens naturally. The supernatural happens naturally. Or God puts his super with our natural. Amen. Amen. So I've got a few examples here. Um, I haven't got time to go into every one of them, but just to give you an idea, in John 2, verse 7, it's the, the wedding feast and Jesus turning water into wine. He says here, fill the water pots. So in John 2, 7, what actually happened was John, uh, uh, Jesus told the people, go and fill the water pots with water. So they had to do something natural. They had to mm-hmm. take natural water pots, fill them with water, and then the supernatural provision happened. So they heard and the word of God. that turned into wine. Yep, and and then they it. acted on it. Yep, they had to obey it. on it. Something mm-hmm. natural. Um, in uh, Matthew 14, 17, we all know the story about the feeding of the 5,000. Mm-hmm. Jesus took those few fish and few loaves of bread and blessed them. There was natural obedience. They gave them to Jesus. Jesus gave them to the disciples. He ripped them. He blessed them. And then it multiplied. Everyone knows the story. Uh, mm-hmm. 5,000 men, maybe 15,000 people total were fed. Supernatural provision after the natural uh, obedience. Uh, we've got another one here. In um, uh, 2 Kings 6, there's a great story in 2 Kings mm-hmm. 6 where they, they lost the axe head in the river. And they're really worried. They're like, Lord, help me. That axe head was borrowed. They're going to take away my children to pay for that axe head. Mm-hmm. And the man of God got a stick, cut a stick down, threw it in the river. Now, how do you know? It doesn't matter if you throw a stick in the river or not. It's uh, not going to make an axe a head A mental float. axe head will not flow. <laughs> right. But it was that like natural obedience, mm-hmm. seeming, you know, crazy, if you like, natural obedience. What? Why would filling water pots up with water produce wine? Why would throwing a stick in the river make an axe head mm-hmm. flow? You know, but it did. It made the axe head flow. Um, what about the widow woman with the pots of oil, 2 Kings 4? Mm-hmm. You know, she had to go and fill up, get pots ready. And then as she poured out her oil, the oil filled up. There was supernatural provision after her natural obedience. And there's story after mm-hmm. story. These are uh, some more New Testament ones. Uh, John 21.6. They, they want to pay their taxes. Mm-hmm. Pay your taxes, people. It's godly to pay your taxes. Right. Give unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Exactly. Jesus said to Peter, go fishing. You know, Peter was a fisherman. So go fishing. So Peter threw a line in. He got a fish, put, opened the fish up and pulled out a coin. Right. Natural obedience. Mm-hmm. Jesus had to take the line and go and fish. Natural obedience created that supernatural provision. There's right. so many instances of this. We could go on and on. But at the end of the day, the point is this. We do something in the natural obedient to God. Mm -hmm. We believe the works of our hands is blessed and God will put his supernatural with that, praise God. And he'll give us breakthroughs. Things will happen. I'm telling you, there's opportunities out there everywhere. And it's interesting you should say that because many people want the supernatural, but they aren't prepared to follow the obedience in the natural first. Mm -hmm. 
And so they miss out on the supernatural blessing of God because they aren't prepared to act in faith, in obedience, and do what God has asked them to do naturally first. Amen. It's like they want the... It's a principle. They want to see the supernatural, but they don't want to do the natural obedience. You know, Proverbs talks about in all diligence there's profit, in all labor there's profit. And sometimes we need to be more... Sometimes we make excuses as Christians and we say, oh, you know, God's going to provide and I'm just waiting on God and everything else. No, God's waiting on us to go and put our hand to something. Well, James says faith without works is dead. Amen. You know, when we really believe something, we have corresponding actions. When we hear God, we really believe that He wants us to prosper. We're going to put action to that faith and the supernatural will follow. Amen. That's exactly what happens, praise God. It's awesome. So I want to ask you, what opportunities are there out there? Some people say there's no opportunities. Actually, you don't understand there's no opportunities. I'm telling you, if you keep telling yourself there's no opportunities to prosper, if you keep telling yourself there's no opportunities to put your hand to something, just your natural mind will shut down. You'll be like, we, there's no opportunities. Why even bother looking? But if you start telling yourself, start agreeing with the word of God and say, I thank you, Lord, I'm blessed. I thank you, Lord, there's opportunities everywhere for me. I thank you, Lord, everything I do, do uh, does, does do. Everything I do prospers. <laughs> That's great English. I know, that's terrible English, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Everything I put my hand to prospers. You start telling yourself that type of thing. I'm telling you, even your natural mind will start looking for those opportunities. Yeah. I do people it's like this. If you ever have a new car, you know, sometimes you might get a new car. Uh, you know, it might be a used car, whatever, but uh, we only buy used cars. But you're driving around in your used car, and all of a sudden, you see that same model everywhere you go. Maybe it's right. me because I'm a because car you're looking guy. For it. I like cars. You're carnal. People say I'm carnal, very <laughs> clever carnal. I see what you did there. But you know, you're looking for cars, and you see, hey, my neighbor's got the same, the guy down the street has got the same car as me. The guy at work's got the same car as me. Now, they were always there. You just weren't looking for them. You weren't aware of them. Right. It's the same with opportunities. You start telling yourself every day. I tell myself every day, divine opportunities come my way. Everything I put my hand to mm-hmm. prospers. Mm-hmm. Opportunities have come my way. Deals have come my way. Businesses Amen. have come my way. Profits come my way. Money's come my so way. So you start thanking God ahead of time before you've even seen it. I th- thank God ahead of time. And in the spiritual realm, it's awesome. It's like a magnet You're for, calling for them provision. things that be not as they as are. As if they are. Yep. But in the natural, my mind in the natural is like, okay, our master's told us there's deals somewhere. Where are the deals? Where are the opportunities? Where are the deals? It's like your radar's up. It's like your radar's up. When you say to yourself, I never get ahead. There's no way to make money. There's no way to invest anymore. There's no way to make money. I'll never get a deal. i never get a you lucky break. You shut yourself off to those your opportunities. Your natural mind goes, why bother looking? Yeah. Our master's already told us there's no deals out there. Right. So I'd encourage you people watching, don't shut down. God wants to provide things for you. And so often he's trying to get things to you and we're shutting them out by mm-hmm. not even putting them on our radar. So start thanking God for the opportunities ahead of you. You know, what opportunities are there? I've got some examples here. You know what? What could you do in the natural? What small thing could you do in the natural to have obedience to bring on the supernatural provision of God? Things like, you know, is there overtime you can do at work? Is there a second job you can take? Can you start a small business? Can you start serving someone and, and actually charging for that? Can you start helping mm-hmm. out in different places? You know, you can even do voluntary work. You can right. do things in the natural. If you to if you're not up. in a position where you're able to earn money, mm-hmm. you can earn favor. That's right. You can earn you favor. Can, you, you can volunteer. volunteer somewhere. You can do things. And you know, maybe you're looking for work. You know, if you're looking for work right now, I'm praying the supernatural favor of God on you. If you're looking mm-hmm. for work, and I tell people, you know, Psalm 103 talks about He crowns us with His loving kindness. If you study that out, that actually means He encircles us with His favor. So when you go for that job interview. Mm-hmm. God's gone ahead of you. God's favor has gone ahead of you. Whether you turn to the right, to the left, behind you, in front of you, God's favor has gone ahead of you. And I tell people, you know, if you're looking for work, make looking for work a job. Right. Go out every day and start looking for work. And I tell people, there's nothing wrong with beating the pavements. Right. Beating the streets, if you say. Beating the sidewalks. Go into stores. You know, I, I go into stores, say, hey, can I speak to the manager? The manager comes out, you shake his hand firmly, you look him in the eye and say, sir, I would love to work here. And that's what you're doing. They say, well, here's an application or we're not hiring. doesn't matter. Do that 50 times a day and yeah. you're going to get a job by the end of the week. It's I'm a job you. to get a job. It's a job to get a job. You can do that. And, you know, don't just sit there and do a few online applications and, and, then, and then play Xbox the rest of the day. No, get out there and actually beat the pavements yeah. and actually make yourself available. And at the end of the day, if you go a week or two and you don't get a job, volunteer somewhere. Right. Get a voluntary job. And then they'll hire you when they see how good you are. I've heard stories of a guy who couldn't get a job. He just went outside Walmart and started sweep, sweeping the sidewalk. And in the end, they hired him. They said, we're not hiring. He said, okay. And he volunteered and they hired him. So you can get a job. You can. There's, there's opportunities out there. Can you get into a small business? Nowadays, 
with the experts industry, with things like eBay and Craigslist and Etsy and all things like that, you can start your own small business. Mm -hmm. You can start your own small business on the side, on top of your normal job in the evenings. How about instead of, you know, playing whatever you play now, Farmville or whatever, words with friends for an hour in the evenings or watch, looking at Facebook at cat pictures for a couple of hours in the evenings. Or recipes. Or oh, recipes. You look at recipes, don't I you? like recipes. I like that, though, because you cook for me. There you go. But you can, you can use that couple of hours in the evenings and actually do some research and actually start your own small business. You can start buying and selling stuff. You can start doing things like that, praise God. Actually, we got time for a question? Go ahead. Because I've, I've got a test here. This is from Bryce and he says, thanks for the work that you do. My wife and I have made a decent amount of added income with minimal investment using your tips. So any advice would be appreciated. And they said I, they have a couple of questions about um, buy, sell, repeat with cars. Do you buy, sell, repeat. This is moment? my program called Buy, Sell, Repeat. Seamless transition. There. Seamless. This is a, this is a 20 course program it's it's videoed in studio we got professional actors to act out some of the scenes and some of the scenarios they role play they role play mm -hmm. i teach on buying and selling i teach on how to use craigslist ebay i teach on it doesn't matter if you've never sold anything before i will teach you how to buy and sell stuff and buying and selling stuff is one way you can make a passive income one way you can make extra income on the side and this is powerful we've had lots of people take this course and literally make thousands of dollars with it. Now, it won't make you a millionaire overnight. Mm -hmm. It's not get rich quick. It will take work to make this work. It's not for everyone, but I'm telling you, if you want to use this, you can use this on the weekend. You can go to garage sales. You can use eBay, Craigslist, whatever, and you can make money on the side. And this has everything you need to know. It has 20 yeah. video lessons. It has um, a curriculum in there. It has cheat sheets. Everything from, from, from step one all the way through, it will show you step by step how to buy and sell stuff. So that will really bless you. It's called yeah. buy, sell, repeat. Yeah. Even if you just got junk in your house to get rid of. You know, most of us have got a bunch of stuff in our basements. An abundance already. I mean, in our garages we don't use. I tell people, if you haven't used it for a year and it's not sentimental, sell it. Right. Go ahead and sell it. If you haven't used it for a year and it's not sentimental, go ahead and sell it. And this will show you exactly how to sell it. So you can start making money right away with this course. It's called buy, sell, repeat. It's on our website. It will really bless you. It's a great tool so, for people. It's really tent making 101. It's tent making right? 101. You can do it on the side. I've got missionaries doing this. Yep. I've got ministers doing this. I've got people that work full time that do it on the side. Real practical skills to help you get out of I've got single mums, single yep. mums doing this. So this is this is really going to bless you. So Bryce, uh, one of the questions is about um, uh, what, what was his question there? You got it. There? <laughs> what it says, oh, a car. It's about when I buy a car only to resell, not for personal okay. use. Is it necessary to get the car registered and titled in your name, or is there a way to get around this added cost? Yes, you know I what? I guess this is specific to America. Yeah, some people buy and sell cars. That's one thing they buy and sell. That's fine. You do need to register it, especially. I mean, I live in the state of Colorado. It may vary slightly from state to state, but as far as I understand, for for America, you need to register that car. So take the title to the DMV. Register that car. You will pay a bit of tax, but that's okay. Register that car, get it in your name, and then you're eligible to yeah. resell it. That's the best follow way to do it. Follow the laws of the land. Follow the laws of the land. Whatever country you're in, whatever state you're in, make sure you follow the laws of the land. You do not want to cut corners, praise God. You want to do everything. Mm -hmm. Be uh, honourable. Uh, yeah, you want to be honourable, do everything as unto the Lord, praise God. So well done, Bryce, for making money. I know you purchased Buy Silver Pete and you've made money with that. So good for you. Well done. Keep making extra money so you can give more and you can... You can uh, Praise God. Live, live better. You You're can live better and be a give blessing. more. Amen. We're out of time. So let me pray wow. for the people before we go. Father God, I thank you that there's opportunities everywhere. I thank you, Lord, that you bless the works of our hands. Amen. I thank you, Lord, you show us natural things we can do. And then you put your super to them and give us that supernatural abundance. And I pray every person watching today that you're going to show them things they can do in the natural, whether it's buying and selling stuff, whether it's doing some overtime, whether it's doing some extra work, whatever it is, Lord, I thank you, you're going to show them and they're going to be obedient. And as they step out in faith and put their hands to something, the works of their hands is blessed and you're going to give them supernatural abundance so they can Amen. give more than they've ever given before in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That's awesome. Praise God. God is so good. So thanks for joining us. And remember, instead of living just the normal life, why don't you live the abundant life? We'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this teaching, visit our website today to order the complete series, teradezministries.com. Coming up next on the Abundant Life program. When that doctor gave me that report, didn't sit right with me on the inside. Now I know in the natural you can think, well, you know, you, you, just, you just wanted to be in denial. You just didn't want to think about it. You just wanted to pretend like it wasn't happening. No, I, I was very aware of what was happening, but I just wasn't going to identify with that as being part of my future. Join us next time for the Abundant Life program with Ashley and Carly Terradez.